Welcome back. It's been a while from the last video, but now I think it's a good moment to remind about myself and to share something with you. And the topic I want to cover today is the question I've been asked quite a few times, is how I got into Facebook. And you will see that my story is quite atypical and it's not really a standard way you can follow. So in order to make this video useful, in the second part I will share the more standard way how anybody can approach it and how you can get into the fun companies as well. I've never really thought about software engineering before and during my studies at universities all the time I have been closer to science and research. Uh, so I did my bachelor in physics in Ukraine and at that time I only had a goal to study abroad, so to be accepted to the master program abroad. And I didn't really care what it will be, but again, at that point of time I was quite limited in my worldview. I saw that if I study physics now, I can only apply in the physics, in the master programs in physics. Now of course I understand that it's very wrong. So if you are a bachelor student and you study some kind of math or physics, you should understand that for master level or for continuation of your education, basically everything is open to you. So any technical speciality like computer science or, I don't know, maybe even economics, basically everything will be possible for you to apply and get admitted and to change your specialization. At that time I didn't know it, so I was mostly looking into the programs around physics and photonics. But with some luck probably I found a joint master program in Europe around imaging and color science, which had some part of the physics in it, which basically attracted me. But it also had some part which was new for me and which looked less boring than just physics. So I applied to this program and later I joined it. So again, I didn't know anything about software engineering or computer science at that point, and I heard something about computer vision from the description of the master program, and I remember clearly how at that summer before starting my master, I just googled what is computer vision, because I was so new to it. But eventually I understood, when I started, I understood that yeah, there is quite a big field of artificial intelligence, of computer vision, of machine learning, which is quite interesting and which may, may be quite prospective for the future. And I started to get enrolled in it. I did a lot of... I started to learn this on myself because my master was not really concentrated on it, so I mostly studied different courses on the internet, which I'm going to share in the one of the next videos, by the way. So I studied myself and also I did a lot of different projects. And I started to get interested into ML research and started to write my own papers. And already at that time, I tried to get as much as possible different internship experience. I didn't fully understand why I needed it, but I think at that point, I already had some feeling that I may need it in the future. But you should understand that, of course, it was very difficult. With almost no previous experience, almost no knowledge, it was difficult to get a good internship in a good company. But somehow on that summer I got accepted for an internship in Kyle Leuven, which is quite good European university where I worked with vision team and I uh, had a chance to work a lot with computer vision algorithms and data science algorithms. And also on the same summer I participated in summer school uh, about deep learning and data science where I met some people who told me about this AI residency program, which at that point sounded like some mysterious program from top research labs, where they take people, they teach them, and they let them work within this lab, which really sounded awesome. And like it was very strange, very unusual, but sounded of course really cool. At that point, I didn't, I cannot really do anything about that, so I just remember it and continue to do my stuff. For those of you who are new to the channel and who don't know what is AI Residency, is indeed a program by top research labs oriented into attracting new talents 
into the field of AI, particularly for people with atypical backgrounds. So not for people who studied computer science in Stanford and then did PhD in Berkeley in some computer science related field. No, it's, it's opposite. It's for people who came from outside, who came from physics or neuroscience or from trading and who got interested in AI research and what is important, who can, who was able to prove their interest somehow. It was not just words that, oh yeah, it looks cool and I want to do it. There was something behind it. And it's important to emphasize here that AI residency is a research program. And that's something I want you to hear. It's not an engineering program for software engineers. It's a research program for people who want who want to write papers in the future and do research, not to create machine learning products. So to me, at that point, it was really perfect. I was interested in research. I already had some achievements to demonstrate. Uh, to that point, I already had a number of publications, including some good venues like CPR workshops and ICCV workshops. So I had something to prove my interest. Uh, I had motivation to continue. And also, I was at that point that I was not sure what I really want to do next. I didn't. I wasn't ready to commit for a very long PhD program, but something like one year, one year program to try myself and to see if research is really for me. It was like perfect. Uh, so I applied to all possible AI residencies. She was able to find. I also applied to some PhD programs to have a backup plan, and. Uh, I was rejected almost from everywhere, even before the first interview. A part of one program, a part of AI residency at Facebook, where I successfully passed all the interviews and where I am now. And basically, that's all. On the summer before joining the program, I started this channel, so you can easily find what happened after. Um, so yeah, so for me, it took just uh, a lot of, not just, just a lot of research work, a lot of publications, some research internships, and really huge motivation to do it and to show that I want to do it. I didn't really have good engineering skills, but what was the strongest point in my case, as I think, it was a large number of accomplished research projects and a large number of publications. Because in the research field, Publications is the first thing people look at. For software engineers, of course, it will be different. While well, we smoothly transit into the second part, I want to tell that AI residency is not a program you should rely on. I really had a big stake on it, but it, I think it was my mistake that I, I, I did it because this program is quite unique and it's really, uh, I don't want to say competitive because it's not about competitiveness. It's mostly about random. It's quite random, like whether you will get it, if whether you will get in it or not. And there are very few open positions. So like when a lot of people apply for it, it really makes zero sense to rely on it as like as your next step in career. But the good news is there are a lot of other ways to get into FANG companies. And probably AI research and AI residency is the weakest and the least reliable way to do it. Overall, a lot of people work in Facebook, in Google and Apple, and they get there somehow. So how do they do that? Most of them are software engineers or SVE, and I assume you are interested in that way as well. And for that, you don't really need anything special. It's quite common role and quite common specialization where recruiters really hire very different people with very different backgrounds. There are almost no requirements for your education. It's mostly for your experience and your way of thinking. It's not even about the programming languages which you know or you use. It's higher than that. This is of course a multi-step process. You first need to apply, then you, your CV got reviewed and if it's good you got invited for a screen interview or a, just a phone call with the recruiter and then screen interview. 
if it's good you go to on-site interviews and if it's good you go you get an offer uh, so go get this very first step accomplished it may be surprising for you but the easiest way to do it is just to apply through the website and it really works but in order to increase your chances and make it really make it really work and not just lost in the lots uh, lots of other applications and CVs, uh, I advise you to apply with referral. So referral is when someone from the company refer you and say, yeah, I know this guy, he is good, you should have a look at him. And that's how your CV got into, into the hands of recruiter. And after that, it's only about how you, how you do on the interviews. And on the interviews, you're not asked about particular technology stack you use or some frameworks. Interviews are all about algorithms and data structures. And these are concepts which are higher than programming languages, because these are abstractions which show the way of organization of algorithms and data. And basically, for now, it's a standard way to evaluate your thinking and your ability to do technical work with some coding. And the best resource for algos is LeetCode, which you've probably already heard of. It's really just a set of such tasks, which are typical for coding interviews. And people, what people do most of the time is just practice them. They do 100 of them, they do 300 of them, 500 of them, different level of complexity. And when they are really good at it, they can go through the, any interview pretty easy. And it's really important part of any application to FANG company. Even for other roles like research engineers, they also ask the same set of algorithms and data structures. Uh, so it's really common and it's something you need to master. Second type of interview, which is also very common but less popular than algorithms, is system design. Like at on-site, normally you can have three or four algorithms interviews and maybe one or two system design questions. So what's system design? Basically, it's just under your understanding of system architecture, like how, how different system works, uh, how website works, how application works, where is server, where is memory, where are databases, what is cache, what is load balancing, how notification works, and so on and so forth. So you may be asked to design some kind of system and you need to describe on a very high level, again, with, without any coding, just how you could implement it and what could be the pitfalls on the way. There is also a third type of interviews, which is, again, very common and you will have it anyway, but which is discussed less since it's less technical, so people consider it to be less difficult, but sometimes it's maybe even more difficult. And this is a personal interview. Personal interview is basically just a discussion between you and interviewer about your previous experience, uh, how you deal with different problems, different situations which occurred uh, in a team with your management or how you manage people, uh, what did you do, what was your emotions, what is your culture of work, and so on and so forth. So very sub subjective questions which sometimes may be difficult because you don't really know how to answer them and you don't know what is a good answer, what is a bad answer. But there are some templ templates which you can follow and basically the, the only good way to prepare for it is just to, to dig into your memory and to collect some full stories which you could just tell in one shot, like what happened, how you solved it and what, what, you, what you learned from it. And usually it's enough. And basically that's all. You don't need to be MIT graduate or Stanford graduate to get into Facebook or Google. And a lot of people from abroad, not from US, who worked in small companies but eventually got here or got here right after graduation from some small university in Europe. It's also possible. It's all about how you match, match the minimum requirements, whether your CV got into the hands of recruiter, and then how you talk to the recruiter and how you would do on the interviews. And basically that's all. After that you get an offer. There are some additional topics like how you negotiate your offer, but I will not cover it here, maybe in one of the next videos. But yeah, basically that's all. It's not a rocket science, it's quite standard 
pipeline, how you do it, and a lot of people have done it, so you can do it as well. And most importantly, if you wasn't accepted, it doesn't mean anything about your abilities and about you as a person, because it's really a very subjective process which depends on many, many factors. And really, like, there are a lot of cases when people have been rejected, but then they got offer for even better company with even better compensation. So it's really tell, tell nothing. If you want to get somewhere just about your efforts and how much time you want to invest in it, and the more you apply, the more you interview, the better your chances will be. Like necessar not necessarily the smarter you are, just how much you do it and how much you try. I hope it was helpful. Leave a comment if you have any more questions. Just don't ask about software engineering because I'm not an expert in it. But yeah, let me know what you think. Press like if it was helpful. Subscribe if you like the channel. And see you next time. Bye. I miss those California nights with you. There's no way I could get over you.